Hi guys, it's Tasha. If you're new to my channel, welcome to the crib. For my returning positive supporters and subscribers, welcome back. Come on in and get comfortable. Guys, today's Throwback Thursday is late, but we're going to be making bath bombs today. And you've seen these containers before. This is baking soda, citric acid, Epsom salt. I have a bowl here for mixing. I have a water bottle set to spray and not stream. I have my essential oil I'm going to use, and I have a mold. Now, this particular mold, I got this one at Michael's years ago, and you see it has these green things in it. They were like a dollar, I think, and I think I got about two or three of these just to see what these things did in the water, and they didn't do anything as far as I know. They just, they didn't do anything. So I had this one left, and I could not find the bath, the, um, the ornaments that I actually purchased to make to use to make the bath bomb so I found this one so we're gonna get this one started uh, let me see what I need anything else so give me a second and I'll be right back okay I had to get the green stuff out of these so let me tell you this making bath bombs it's not an exact science you're gonna have to play with it in order to get it right okay I just want to let you know, so if you decide to do this and it doesn't come out quite right, just keep playing with it. It'll, it'll, it'll work out eventually. It took me a while to get the water ratio. And some people use, um, I think, is it witch hazel in there? I just use water. Okay, first we're going to get one cup of baking soda. And I got a half cup scoop here. So we're going to get, and this is just, I'm just making one small batch. And I think this should make about maybe four bath bombs so let's see we get is that a cup there we go there we go now that's one cup of baking soda which was two half cups and now i need a half a cup of citric acid and y'all see these black labels i'll just put what i already needed on here so i don't have to go back and look at a recipe because i didn't do it that often so instead of me having to go back and try to find what i needed i just Took my labeler and put it on there and that was it okay so we just need one half cup of citric acid and one half cup of epsom salt my epsom salt has this cup this it's measuring cup in here so I'm just a cup of this put this in now let me put these out of the way okay now i'm just gonna go through this and break up any lumps and guys use your what up if you have a, a book about essential oils use your book to come up with or see what they suggest use which oils to use for what purpose like I've been making, uh, the, the tub teas were for relaxing, chamomile and lavender. So, those were the two oils that I picked. And them, there are more that will do the same thing. But, you know, it's really up to you which ones you like the best. Really, that's all it boils down to. Okay, now that I've got this, you know, pretty much okay, I guess. Um, like I say... Pick out what oils you want to use. This is one that I've had, and I've had this one for years. It's called Chill Peel, and it's featuring... Okay, guys, I was not recording. Um, I put about, about 10 drops of essential oils in here, and... That was about what was left in my bottle of chill peel. So now I'm just going to work this all the way through until I think that, you know, there are no lumps in here, that all of the oil is worked well into the powders, that I can't see any like lumps of essential oil that has dried up with the powder or however you say it, that has clumped together with the powders. So I'm just going to work this. It's going to probably take me about you know, a couple minutes to do. 
And as soon as I get it done, I'll let you guys see it. Okay, this is what it looks like now. And you really just make this the strength that you really want. And I like for it to really be fragrant. Okay, so next what we're going to do is the water. This is the tricky part. So you spray the water in. And you don't want to put too much because it, see how it's fizzing? I don't know if you can see that, but that's what you really don't want to happen. But it's going to fizz some anyway because you're mixing in water. But you want it to be kind of like, uh, what is it? Like wet sand, the consistency of wet sand. Now let me tell you this too. It may not seem like it's right, but give it a minute. Because sometimes uh, this seems like it produces water. So let me put another another couple of sprays. And we're just going to put enough water in it for it to hold together. Just like that. You see that? It's holding together. So let's, let's get these in the trays. It's missing me in the trays, in the, um, the molds. And you don't twist it, you just put them together and squeeze. I might have put too much in here, but you put them together and squeeze. This is not a process for the faint of heart. And you actually squeeze the, bath, the, the mold itself to release it. You don't squeeze a whole lot. Squeeze just enough to release it. And there's your bath bomb. Now, like I say, remember, do not make these when it's raining. This is still moist enough. Let's make one more. We're just going to shove, stuff these. Then we're going to put them together like so and squeeze. Now, I might not have put enough in this one. We're going to squeeze it anyway. And then we're going to squeeze the mold a little bit to release it. Squeeze it a little bit to release. And there you go. Okay, guys. You see that there are more bath bones over here than the last time. You saw me it's because these had way too much water and these still no it's way too much water when I told you that it was really sticky that was too much water I had to rebatch them and what rebatching means is I took another cup of baking soda half a cup of citric acid a half a cup of Epsom salt and took those two that were up here and just crumbled them into that dry mix that's called rebatching and that will save your product so you just have more of the product so let me move these out the way and I have the bowl of water here you're supposed to let these dry for at least overnight or 24 I say overnight or 24 hours uh, you can actually put them in the oven to dry them if you want. I've never done that, but it's possible. So let's see. I'm going to take this one, this little half crumbly one, and let's see what happens. In three, two, one. How about that? How about that? Just like an apple salsa. Did you see the starting fizz on that baby right there? And that was just half of a bath bomb. Should I drop a whole one in here? Should I? Should I? Should I? Let's see. This was the first one I rebatched. It's flat on the bottom because I got it sitting on a flat surface. If you sit these on a salt, I'm going to put it right. If you sit these on a salt surface, then that won't happen. So... In three, whole bath bomb, whole one. In three, two, one. Have mercy. That's what you call the bath bomb, guys. It's, yeah. 
Had the lavender and the chamomile. Very relaxing in your bath water. Just like the tub teas. Can you see it right there? Can you And of course, if you add the coloring to this, your water, depending on how much uh, coloring you put in, your water will change to that color. But like I said, I really don't like putting coloring in my bath bombs. I just like to keep stuff as natural as possible to avoid any allergic reactions. Okay, guys, that is it for this episode of Throwback Thursday. I want to thank you guys for taking time out of your day to watch my video. If you haven't, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. Don't mind the mess. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. All your comments are truly appreciated. Come back anytime and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye-bye, love bugs.